I was the fourth one out of the vehicle, and when I turned towards the building, the plan was we were going in the building. There, there was so many people shooting at us that it looked like the ground was moving. So I'm running towards this thing. I realize I'm not gonna make it. This is where I'm gonna die. The dream I had since I was nine years old, standing on the back of a pickup truck, was flying and uh, building an aircraft from scratch. And the most enjoyable part of the whole process is probably the first 30 seconds of flight. In that first 30 seconds, you think about every piece and part that you've touched on the plane, every cotter pin that's gone into it. The first time you break ground in a plane that you've put together, it's terrifying and exciting and there's a lot of pride that you've taken all these parts and made them carry you away from the ground. Hello, my name is Junior Daniel. I'm the owner of Dancini Arrow, and we built your 2024 Alaska Airmen's Association raffle plane. We built it to be as light as possible with the, with the maximum amount of use possible, and I really don't want to let it go. One of y'all are going to end up with uh, my dream aircraft, and I built it for you. The engine is a Superior 0360. Aero Recip assembled it with uh, 9 to 1 pistons, and they dynoed it there and our dyno test ends, ends up at 194.4 horsepower. And then we attached a Cato ground adjustable 86 inch prop on top of that. Ultimately what it gets you is a massive amount of acceleration and a really, really good climb. So this engine is a brand new engine. It is not an overhauled engine. Every piece and part on this engine is brand new. This one pulls the best, it breaks ground the best. And it's, it's not just associated with the engine, but with the power that we're producing with this specific engine and the, the blade attached to it. The first time I took off with it, Wolf Lake is 3,800 feet long. I broke 2,000 feet before I made it to the end of Wolf Lake uh, airstrip with no wind. It's, it's pretty dang impressive. <laughs> the dream I had when I was nine years old riding in the bed of a pickup truck was wanting to fly helicopters in the Army. I decided that I was going to leave the military and go to uh, Ames in Greeley, Colorado and do their flight school and then come back in the military as a uh, flight warrant. During all this, I get orders to come to Alaska and I tell them I'm not going to take the orders. And they said that if I didn't, I couldn't come back in the military as a non-commissioned officer, commissioned officer, or a warrant officer. So I took the orders hoping I wouldn't deploy again. And that one, we went to Afghanistan. Real, real fast into that deployment. And I say real fast, I mean, day one, I was quite certain I was gonna die on that one. I wasn't gonna come home. Um, and I think a lot of us were kind of at that realization. The last mission I did pretty much ended my time in the Army. We just came back from a seven day mission. I come back and I took a shower, my uniform, pretty much stood stood up by itself in the corner of my room and I laid down to go to sleep. And I think I was asleep for like an hour and then uh, Ryan Stump comes in my room. He was the weapons uh, squad leader and says that we got activated. We get in the trucks and drive into town. The helicopters that are uh, over where we're going is saying that there's a pink building that's shooting up this Afghani police compound. I was the fourth one out of the vehicle, and when I turned towards the building, the moment I turned towards the building, I realized I was not making it to the building. It, they, there were so many people shooting at us, it looked like the ground was moving. So I'm running towards this thing. I realize I'm not gonna make it, this is where I'm gonna die. And then there's this little bitty ditch out in front of the building. I'm like, I'm, only, I'm, I'm not going to the building anymore, I'm going to the ditch. I call in the first airstrike, and I, I, I told them, it'll be danger close, you're shooting over our heads. And I said that to them a couple more times because they were literally going to be shooting over our heads. They were, we're gonna use them to get out of the kill zone. They called 10 seconds out. 
and then we start running. The bombs landed really close to us, and the last one was a, a GBU-31 out of a B-1 bomber, and that's the one that ended all of it. You know, it blew the whole roof off the building, um, but every every attack was danger close. Like we should have, we totally should have died. You know, once that happened, I was no longer the cream of the crop because I couldn't perform the way that I used to, and uh, uh, the army didn't want me anymore. Kind of ruined the the dream of flying in the you know flying helicopters in the army. All right, we're gonna talk about these wings now. We use the Javron wing. So our goal with the wing is to get the wing as big as possible. One of the things is to square the wing off, and that's what we've done here. The aileron with the curved tip wing is going to end right here. And then you'll have your bow tip that comes out and comes around. So we've added this much more lifting surface onto the, onto the wing. And then we've moved the aileron, so we have a full length aileron. We've moved it outboard up to the wing tip. The original alteration to the wing kept the full length aileron right here. You kept your short flap and then you had all this more lifting surface out here. So you would end up coming in in a crosswind and not having the leverage to put the wing back down as the wind was picking that wing up. This solves that problem. Along with solving that problem, it gives you greater, uh, or it gives you more room to extend that flap outboard. So the flaps are 90 inch flaps. We extend the cord by inch and three quarter. It gives you 5.6 square foot of more lifting surface. So with our baggage doors, as you can see, we have a very large baggage door right here. It gives you full access to the, the extended baggage and it's the aircraft. This makes it really easy so you can access your uh, cow blanket. You can put sleeping bags back there. And then we have our forward baggage door. This one, we drop this door frame all the way down to the floorboard so that we can easily put things into the aircraft, take things out of the aircraft without having to drag it across the door frame. We go with the oversized tail feathers to, to get more leverage in regards to your flare and in regards to when you start putting a lot of weight in the aircraft. And same thing with trimming it out in flight. That's gonna help you trim the aircraft out in flight when you have, when, when the plane is grossed out. The seats that we use are made at Sport Aircraft Seats. They're very high quality seats. It's all 100% cowhide. A lot of cubs you climb into and the seats are, one, really heavy, two, halfway worn out, cracked. These don't do that. And on top of that, they're they're very comfortable to sit in. You know, I've, I've sat in these seats for eight hours in one day and I can still walk when I get out of the airplane. So our dash is, a, is ultimately a Garmin panel. To make it as user-friendly as possible with the least amount of workload on the pilot is how we've created this, how we've come up with the exact way this dash is laid out. We don't put any switches down low. The specific purpose to that is I can, I can rest my hand on the dash and move switches around. So that doesn't seem like that big of a deal until the, you're going through some pretty bad turbulence and it's beating the hell out of you. You can rest your hand up here, actuate your switches, you can rest your hand up here, navigate your GPS. Everything around our dashes are made to lower the pilot's workload. I love this prop. This is uh, this is the nicest prop I've ever flown. So this is a Cato ground adjustable propeller. And they started manufacturing these things this year. It's an 86 inch prop. It's super simple to adjust the pitch in it. Right now it's pitch for cruise. And our takeoff roll is maybe four airplane lengths. We're cruising about 90 miles an hour, maybe a touch over 90. And the flat pitch setting with full fuel, we're two and a half airplane lengths. We're climbing at 1700 feet a minute and uh, we're cruising about 80 miles an hour. So everyone wants to talk about the swept tip on the prop. The blade tip is swept backwards. The reasoning being is it's moving the vortice out of the way for the trailing, uh, trailing blade. So every, every time this blade turns, it's getting fresh air and it's not getting a bunch of turbulence from the leading blade. This is the way I like building airplanes. We're building a tool here. 
you know, the real application of it is get to the shortest strip that you can get to and then leave that thing carrying the plane grossed out. So we need to accelerate really fast. We need to create a tremendous amount of lift, then make it reliable as well. And that's, that's ultimately done. I tried to do law enforcement for a little bit and I really didn't enjoy it. And I still had that drive to want to fly. I was sitting in, a, in one of the patrol cars, staring at an airplane, making sure it didn't run away on base at J Bear. And that's when I decided I wasn't, I wasn't doing this anymore. I was gonna just do something that I would enjoy doing and figure everything else out along the way. And that's what I did, I quit my job. You know, I attempted to use my GI Bill to fly and they wouldn't allow me to do it because I had a brain injury. But I still wanted to be in aviation, so I decided to use them to, um, to become a mechanic and you know, at least work on planes. I started going to um, different hangars around the area, and I had a lot of people turn me away. I drove over to Wolf Lake to look and see if I could see some, um, I think I Googled it, and it was Mario's Aircraft Service there, and I drove over to see if anyone was there. And so I went over there and I met Mario Macaroni, and Mario is the one that drove me to become a pilot. Um, and I'm pretty sure his exact wording is, you're useless to me if you're not a pilot. And he, he let me fly 7-8 Zulu. Um, he, paid, um, he paid Daniel Holman to instruct me. And Mario is the reason why I started flying. I didn't ask for anything from him, but that's the way he compensated me, was to, you know, uh, give me that gift. So I, 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 get my, I get my pilot's license. I end up buying this Cessna 120 uh, for $12,000. And I got really, really good at flying this plane. Super underpowered, it doesn't want to fly. It wants to turn around on you all the time, wants to tip over. I, I do my first off airport landing in it and damn near tip the plane over trying to go places where Super Cubs were. Well, my best friend, Joe Cizik, he's got this experimental 18. And one day I'm out there working on it, he tells me I can fly it whenever I want. So that's the first Cub that I climbed in was his. And I thought it was gonna be this big ordeal because Super Cub pilots are just the coolest thing ever. They do all, all the cool stuff. You gotta be real good to be a Super Cub pilot. So I climb in this thing. It's easy. It's super easy. Everything was way easy about it. I, you know, I flew that little underpowered thing. I could feel the plane. So now I climb in a Super Cub and it, you could feel everything in a Super Cub. The PA-18 is a very docile aircraft to begin with. And then you add all these additional things that we've put on it to increase your margins. You be, it becomes a safer aircraft. That's. I mean, that, that's ultimately how we ended up with a, you know, with the plane that we have over there. The reason why I work on the planes that I work on is I, I liked the things that Super Cubs could do. And then if you put someone behind the seat of one that can operate that equipment to its fullest potential, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can go anywhere you want with it. It opens all the doors in Alaska. What makes this airplane so great is you don't have to be the greatest pilot in the world. You don't, you don't have to go out and build, you know, build 2,000 hours a year to go the places all the rest of these planes are going. It will make you look like you do 2,000 hours a year in the aircraft. The dream I had, you know, wanting, wanting to fly helicopters in the Army, I've, I think I've, I've far surpassed accomplishing that goal. Once I left the, you know, the past experience of being in the military behind me and um, started focusing on what was going to make me happy in life. Not only do I, you know, am I able to fly now, I'm, I'm flying an aircraft that I built wherever I want to go, whenever I want to go there, and landing wherever I want to land, you know, I, I have the ultimate form of freedom.